Welcome into Hitting Hard with John Chuckery here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Today on the show, how many more starters do the Falcons need to acquire? No excuses for the Hawks tonight. And Bogey's back. It's all next. Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, Locked On Sports Atlanta. This is Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. Hitting Hard is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. We ask you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can get Hitting Hard as soon as it's available. Roku and Amazon Fire is also a couple of platforms you can check us out. And then give me a follow on my personal Twitter page at JMCH316. So I was thinking about this and kind of breaking it down and trying to figure out how many more starters do the Atlanta Falcons need at this point? So we've obviously filled some holes and and we've we've gotten some pieces and things like that, but how do the how do the deck chairs get all situated around? Now, before I get into necessarily how many and things like that, there are going to be some interesting decisions or calls to be made over when it comes to figuring out where the roster is. For instance, okay, number one, do they think of Casey Hayward as their starting number two corner? Because if they don't, and maybe they slide Casey Hayward into a nickel role, then you've got to find another starting corner, okay? But if they think Hayward could be their number two, then you just have to fill in a nickel corner. And I will consider a nickel corner a starter in the NFL because they play 60, you know, 66% of the time they're starters. I mean, you 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 pay, you play, excuse me, over 60% of your pass coverage in nickel. So you you have to have at least a third cornerback available to you. So I would think nickel starter is a quarterback. Now, I know a lot of people would say wide receiver is also another place. But as we talked about yesterday or day before on the show, with a John New Smith, would they be looking at sliding Kyle Pitts on the outside more? You know, if you sign Zacchaeus as a slot wide receiver and you've got London and you've got John New Smith, does that kind of fix itself where you've got Kyle Pitts as your wide receiver too? So whether or not you wanted to sign a slot receiver or if you play a Parker Hesse and a couple tight end set, there's different ways you can go about this that you don't really have to necessarily add another piece. Now, I hope that they sign Zacchaeus just because I think he's a good third or fourth wide receiver. In fact, I wouldn't mind signing Zacchaeus and Demir Bird. I wouldn't mind having those two guys around as bottom tier wide receivers, third, fourth guys that... You know, if you had to go a little bit of different offense, you want to spread it out a little bit, you could throw those two guys out there, right? And Birds did some, Demir Bird did some good things last year. But depending on how you play Jonu Smith and Kyle Pitts, if he slides to the outside, then you kind of have your second wide receiver tacked on. Now, again, he's not the traditional wide receiver like we think about, but if he slides outside and, you know, he's going to be kind of that wide receiver too, that option that's out there. Obviously, left guard is the real spot that has to be addressed. And they picked up the Hinton kid from Minnesota. They've got um, Matt Hennessy in place. Could they go out and re-sign Elijah Wilkinson? Those all feel like stop gaps, okay? Like they don't – I know Hinton could be a guy that's in line – to play that position. He's from Minnesota, right? I mean, he's a seventh round draft pick. He's played some, you know, with the Vikings. I don't know. I mean, that doesn't seem like a very logical solution. Jalen Mayfield is still on the roster, but again, he's the worst interior offensive lineman in the league. Why do I want to play him? Like, why do I, to be honest with you, like, unless Mayfield shows me that he can be a comp, I mean, a really competent player, I'm cutting him. I'm, I'm giving him the Marlon Davidson, and I'm going to cut him. But Elijah Wilkinson, 
Matt Hennessy, who they played at guard last year. Okay, do I really want Matt Hennessy and Drew Dolman standing side by side for 17 games? Two undersized guys that will end up getting exposed. One game here, one game there. I can live with that when there's an injury or whatever. 17 games of rolling that out, that's Mayfield and Hennessy again. We're right back in the same position. Those two guys will get pushed backwards into the backfield all day long. So I do think that they have to find a legitimate starter for that left guard position. And from there, do you play Caden Ellis as kind of a edge to middle inside linebacker? Obviously, Michael Walker, who started a lot, then kind of fell out of favor. Can he have a bounce back season? Because you put him, Michael Walker, Troy Anderson. You know, I don't know if Michael Walker can necessarily be a three down linebacker, but this leads into a Rashawn Evans. Because I do think that Ellis is a guy who profiles better at his size and everything of coming around and using his speed to get around, you know, tackles. And you've seen where, where he picks up a lot of his sacks, he's going around a tackle or, or he's running behind a guy that's on your edge and he's eating up the quarterback at that point. So he can play a little bit inside. I've seen videotape of him playing some inside, but it makes you wonder that do they need to sign a Rashawn Evans? Do, do they bring him back? When you figure if Ellis, if you figure that um, uh, Troy Anderson, Michael Walker, can they rotate those guys around? Because, again, we've talked about Lorenzo Carter on one side, Ellis if he's on one side, Eba Cady, your number eight draft pick. Okay, you start to have an accumulation of guys. So I do think that left guard is the number one thing that's got to be upgraded and locked down. I don't think that there is a – let me put it this way. There's not a 17-game viable option to me – at left guard. Hennessy or Hinton or Mayfield, none of those are options that I look at and say, okay, I'm confident that if we plug 17 games of this guy in there, that we'll be in good shape. I don't believe that for a second. I don't believe that. And listen, maybe that's the route that they go. Maybe they like their interior candidates, right? They're, they're in the house candidates. I don't like any of those guys. And yes, I wanted Nate Davis. That was one of the guys I brought up. Obviously, he signed on day one with the Bears. But that was a guy that is a real upgrade at your left guard spot. And again, when you have money to spend, you don't have to hold on to all your money. You know, you can allocate five or six million for your draft class. You can allocate five or six million to just hang on to for a rainy day fund. But if you've got money to spend, that's a position that I need to see upgraded. So the Falcons are in pretty good shape just as far as how many guys they need. Might be two maybe a max of three starters left. And part of that will be addressed in the draft, right? I mean, obviously we need an edge player, okay? But I'm counting on, no, I'm I'm begging the Falcons to use that number eight pick on an edge player to solidify that spot. Then it becomes guard, maybe an inside backer, or a either third corner or a second corner, depending on what you want to do with, Casey Hayward. All right, let's talk about our friends over at FanDuel. Listen, FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And when you go to FanDuel.com and sign up today, you can claim your no sweat first bet where you can win as much as $1,000 in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. They allow you to bet on anything from money lines to props and everything in between. Plus, FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. Claim your no sweat first bet, where if your first bet doesn't win, you could get as much as $1,000 in bonus bets. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook betting partner of the NBA. So listen, tonight, no excuses for the Atlanta Hawks. No excuses whatsoever, okay? Golden State and the Hawks match up tonight. 
Golden State traveling across the country. I think they just played the other night on the West Coast. They're not going to have Draymond Green because he got his 16th technical the other night and the NBA denied his appeal. So no excuses tonight. They've had three days off, right? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Game tonight. They played last on Monday when they got smacked around by the Minnesota Timberwolves. No excuses. I don't want to hear about guys are tired. I don't want to hear about it's just that season of the year. I don't want to hear about Golden State's the NBA champions from last year. Well, you know, Golden State's still really good. They got Steph and Clay and Michigas. I don't want to hear anything from the Hawks tonight. The Hawks need to take care of business. They're at home playing a team coming west to east. They don't have one of their key components of Draymond Green not being around. Maybe their best, obviously, defensive player on their roster. No excuses for the Hawks tonight. They have to go out and win this game. And again, we're running out of games. You know, we're, we're running out of games. Six seed, forget about all that, okay? I'm just trying to hang on to the eighth seed for dear life. I, I, I'm not getting into the ninth seed. I'm not getting into the 10th seed. I'm not dealing with all that kind of stuff. I am just going to hang on for dear life to that eighth seed. And if everything breaks the Hawks' way and – Maybe they find themselves in the seven. Great. But I am hanging on for dear life because then you'll have two swings at it if you need to get to the first, when you get to the first round of the playoffs, right? If you if you win the seven, eight game, you're the seven seed. If you lose the seven, eight game, then you play the winner of the nine, 10, the way that this Fakakta NBA play-in system is. You win the, the a matchup against the nine, 10 winner and you win that game. Now you're the eighth seed. But there is no excuse tonight. We're going to talk about contracts here in, in just a minute. But the Hawks have to get it in gear. And, and that was a, look, I'll chalk up Monday night to, okay, the Hawks needed a day off. They needed a rest. They had played three games in four nights, right? Minnesota's not terrible. They're not great, but they're not terrible. You know, you're not going to have 82 nights a year where you play your best basketball, right? I mean, Sam Mitchell and I used to talk about this, former NBA coach, coach of the year. We used to talk about this all the time. There's going to be a dozen or so games that, in all honesty, either you're going to blow somebody out or they're going to blow you out, but you're not going to get either the other team's best effort or sometimes your best effort in a game like that. There's always going to be a handful of those games where no matter what you do, either everything falls in the bucket or it feels like there's a rim on top of the basket. Well, that was what Monday night felt like. Monday night felt like a game that we were just never in. You gave up 40 points in the first quarter. Defense really let you down. I think they were tired. I think they had some tired legs. I think that the, the road trip and then following up with Boston, just everything caught up with the Hawks. And, and I do think that they – were in dire need of having a night off, more than maybe just a night, a couple nights off. Well, now you've had Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I think that the Hawks didn't even practice or anything or even have any kind of shoot-arounds on Tuesday. They just did nothing basketball-related and then got back into it Wednesday and then Thursday. So you've been able to practice some more with, with Quinn Snyder. You're at home. You're not traveling. you got a team that's coming west to east to play the Atlanta Hawks, right? And and the Hawks have done pretty well on some of these, you know, coming west, coming from the left coast to come in and play. Hawks have had some success in that standpoint. But I don't care that Steph Curry's, you know, the the champion and and they're all this and that and what have you. You have to take advantage of tonight. So it'll be interesting to see how the Hawks come out early. Early. Like it like that first quarter, because they laid a complete egg that last that, that Monday night in that first quarter when they gave up 40 points. I, I really expect and hope that the Hawks are going to be laser focused right from the jump coming in to that first quarter and they grab and they get out early on the Warriors and they try to maybe put them away a little bit early in this thing. And that's not always going to be easy. But again, getting out to a lead early on the first quarter not finding yourself down 10 or 11 points in the first quarter like what they did the other night. 
That was a disaster of a first quarter. And then they followed it up with an even worse second quarter. So no excuses for the Hawks tonight. They've got to get it done. you got to find a way to win. Everything sets up, right? We, we look at things that set themselves up, okay? Draymond is out. They're coming west to east, right? They played the other night. Hawks have had a few days off, right? All of these things line themselves up where a lot of things didn't line up last week and that Friday, Saturday when they were, you know, in uh, in Washington then played Boston the next night. A lot of things like that didn't line up. Tonight lines itself up. And you've got to protect your home court. If the Hawks lose tonight, we have to have some real heart-to-heart -heart discussions about the future of where this team is. Because they lose a game like tonight. Mm, I, I don't think that this is just a – I don't think it's just as easy to say that they replace the coach and all is going to be well. But you got to give it time and all that. No, nope, no. Nope. Hey, you lose tonight where everything sets up for you to win. You lose a game like this tonight, then we got to start asking some real questions. And always remember, just when you think you have the answers, I change the questions. All right, let's talk about our friends over at Built Bar. Listen, we're getting in shape this year, right? We're trying to eat healthier. You're looking for those high protein snacks, but low carb, low sugar, low calorie. Built Bar has got you covered. 130 gram, 130 calories, four grams of sugar, but 17 grams of protein in each built bar. And whether you go the with the uh, protein infused marshmallow puffs or your traditional protein bars, you get all the sources and different flavors either way. Now though, you can head over to Walmart in the pharmacy section or over to Sam's Club and buy your box of built bars there. So whether you go the brick and mortar route of going to Walmart, Sam's Club or you head over to built.com, built.com and get your protein bars that way. Either way, you can go, but obviously you can try all the different flavors. They're coming out with new flavors every single month. So grab your box of Built Bars today, either at Walmart, Sam's Club, or go the online route at Built.com. Well, Bogey is back, right? Everything's good in the world of Bogey Bogdanovich. Four years and $68 million. So, do I like this deal? I like the idea of having Bogey around this franchise coming off the bench. Okay. However, however, okay. Bogey's got to find a way to stay healthy. Now that's easier said than done. Okay. And, and obviously he's missed a good bit of time. The knees are all bad. The knees are shot. But again, Four for 68 isn't a bad deal at all. I, I don't I don't really have too much of a problem with that kind of deal. Remember, he had a player option available to him for $18 million, but I think he wanted to peddle his wares and see what he could get as a long-term deal. So he turned $18 million into $68 million. So that's good for him. And I like the idea of having Bogey around. He's a consistent bench score for this team. And arguably over the last two or three years, He's been the most consistent guy coming off your bench to be able to score. And, and you could, listen, you could certainly spot start him when you need to, right? He's been a starter. You Obviously, the Hawks have used him in that role. You could spot start with him as you need to. You get injuries or whatever, you can certainly spot start him. But this deal only really makes sense if you can tell me that Bogey is going to have some health. He's, he's going to be healthy for this. He can't be a... 45 50 game player over the life of this thing if he's a 45 50 game player over these next few years then this deal is not very good because he's got to be on the floor to help your bench out and again we expect that aj griffin jalen johnson those are guys that are going to step themselves up sadiq bay if he's signed for the long term but when you have some of these questions i mean your rookies and your second year guys those guys are in place but what do you do with a Sadiq Bay? Do you move on from a John Collins, a DeAndre Hunter, or a Clint Capella? Does DeJounte Murray become expendable? Because here's the other part of this, too. Now that you've got Bogey locked up with a guaranteed $68 million for four years, if Tony Ressler is going to hold to his guns about not being in the luxury tax 
if we're not a very good franchise or if we're not in the hunt for NBA greatness, then you're going to have to have a lot of maneuvering. And, and you're going to have to, it's going to be Collins. It's going to be a Capella. It's going to be a DeAndre Hunter. I don't think it's going to be one guy. I think it's going to be two guys. Because again, you know, Bogey's got his contract now. Capella's up in salary. Hunter's up in salary. He starts his new deal next year. Collins is still getting more money. Trey Young is still getting more money, right? The only guy who really is, you know, a consistent number, and that's only because he's got this year and only next year, is DeJounte Murray. So that's the only guy that you've got, you know, basically the same amount of money over a two-year period where DeJounte is getting about 17 to 17 to 18. It's even less than 18 over this year and next year. But I like the fa- I, I like the idea and the concept of having Bogey around and on this club. Now I got to see what it does to our salary cap. Because if the Hawks are willing to roll through, you know, roll this group back out there minus a few little minor changes and stuff like that and play with this group, they're going to be hardcore in the luxury tax. Cap's only going up to about 134 million. I think that the Hawks, I think the Hawks starters right now, the five starters account for, I think it's 110 million of that cap number. So again, if we're going to stay out of the luxury tax, you know, this is a deal that I like the player, but my concerns are that, you know, we've got some damaged goods here with this as well. You know, I, I, I don't mind it, but boy, you got to tell me that over the life of this contract. And maybe they move him after like the third year or something like that. And you get an expiring contract type of trade, right? We see those all the time in the NBA where clubs will move contracts just because they're expiring contracts. But if I can get for the next three years, at least 60, 65 games out of bogey, I'll consider that success. And if I can get some of the same production where, again, I think he's your fourth leading scorer on the club. So even though he comes off the bench and plays a decent amount of minutes, he's you know about a 30-minute per night player, he's still your fourth leading scorer on this squad. And he's a good three-point shooter, so he can knock down some threes when you need some threes late in the game. Obviously, he's a great free-throw shooter. But this deal, to make sense to me, he's got to be able to play 60 or 65 games a year over the next three years. Is that going to happen? Maybe. Could I? Would I be surprised if it doesn't? Because I think Bogey's on pace to play 57 games or something like that. That's not enough. That that it, it it's got to be more toward that 65 type of range to make this contract viable. Because you just have too many nights then at that point where he's not on the court and he's not helping this team out. And you can't rely on his scoring coming off the bench because there are some of these. And especially as this bench has gotten shorter and shorter and shorter and more compressed and compressed and compressed that, you know, again, he's a valuable piece, but not if he's not on the court. So we'll see what happens. I do like the deal, though, but it will be interesting to see what they what they do here, you know, moving forward as far as contracts and stuff go. All right, well, thank you so much for making Hitting Hard with John Chuck for your first listen every day. Make sure you make Locked On Sports today your second listen. The biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day available. Odyssey, YouTube, wherever you get your podcast from. We ask you to subscribe or follow us for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast from. You can always get Hitting Hard as soon as it's available on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Roku and Amazon Fire are two more ways to check out all of our content, and then give me a follow on my personal Twitter page. It would be at JMCH316. We'll be back with you on Monday. 